before we move on, I got to say right here, we see Anthony Richardson, 208 off the board. We'll talk about him right now because this is a player who's going somewhere between rounds five to seven in all of the streams we've had thus far, immediately bouncing into the late second. My quick thoughts, probably let Jake take over, is maybe Anthony Richardson would knock the thing out of the park more than you could have even expected at the combine. But we knew this guy was a freak. We knew when he stands in any room, he commands attention. This is a huge freak guy. He's breaking out of his shirt buff. He runs super fast. But the question remains if he can play quarterback, if he can throw the football, if he can play at an NFL offense, if he can increase accuracy, if he can, you know, read team defenses and, I don't think we saw anything to change those question marks. He can throw the ball 60, 70 yards. You know, how consistently how accurate. He showed at the combine, he threw a deep ball. I'm not going to let that get me too ahead. I think the combine really just brought a lot of people who didn't necessarily have eyes on Anthony Richardson up to speed. But for me, I think he's still that elite aspect. I wasn't expecting best quarterback athlete of all time. Um, but I, I don't think a whole lot changed for me other than where his rookie draft ADP goes. I still think it's a very, very high risk in the second round. Um, I'm certainly not taking him over Dak Prescott, a player I just got there at the do 12. Um, Jake, what are your, what are your thoughts on Anthony Richardson and has your view of the player changed with the performance he put on at the combine? Uh, my personal view on it hasn't really changed at all. The only thing that's really changed, I think the NFL, um, is going to take a bigger risk on him than they may have prior. Um, and does that impact his value in dynasty? Sure. Um, I still think he's more of like a third or fourth round pick for me. I just don't want some, for someone like him, he would not only have to make a historic step in accuracy to, to meet like even just below league average, if he jumps his accuracy from his most recent year at Florida to what Justin Fields did last year, that's still bottom portion of the league. And yes, Justin Fields was a top five quarterback in points per game, but that's also because he set the quarterback or almost set the quarterback rushing record. And while I think Anthony Richardson can do that for him to be a consistent presence in the NFL, he really has to work on, on the passing aspect of his game, which is, you know, it's fine, but in the second round, I'm not taking a guy that I personally, I expect him to be drafted by a Seattle, a Detroit, a team that needs a quarterback for the future, but has a guy right there right now that they can compete with. And if they let him sit under Geno, I think if Seattle move, you know, moves up and takes him, I think that's about as perfect of a situation as he could fall into from a developmental standpoint. Um, and for me, I'm not taking a guy in the second round of a, of a startup draft that I'm not expecting to play for a year. Yeah, I think the most reasonable landing spot here for Anthony Richardson would be whoever trades up to spot three where Arizona currently sits. I don't think that I think they're in a prime spot to move back. And you do have you have Detroit and Seattle sitting right after. I think those would be the best teams for Anthony Richardson. As Jake said, they got a guy who can play year one. They are well-run, good coaches. Uh, the team has an identity, and really he can come in when he's ready. Mm -hmm. He's not going to be asked to do too much right away. We do have someone in the chat here who is saying Bryce and CJ have to be top 10 passes to match Richardson's fantasy production. And that's under the assumption that Richardson is going to be out in the field, stay on the field, get a full run on the field, and that a team is going to build around him properly, like you know a Lamar or a Jalen you know, when their time finally came in. In the NFL, you really hope that a team would do that because, as we see, this athleticism is unreal. You know, we hope we don't have a situation like Chicago where they brought in a rookie, Justin Fields, who is was a top-tier athlete, and they said, we're going to put you in the same offense and expect you to do the exact same things that Andy Dalton does for this team. And it was a disaster, right? So we just really got to hope a team builds around Anthony Richardson when they take him. And there's just a lot of risk there. I don't blame anyone. I think this conversation kind of starts at CJ Stroud, that 103 spot. Unless if you know you have Stroud as your QB2, I think once you look past Stroud Young, that's where the conversation starts for me for Richardson. I'm not going to overlook what Bryce did in college where he was maybe the best quarterback for one to two years in college football. He carried a lesser Bama team at times in the season, did everything you could have asked for him. He made magic happen when things broke down. And just because he's a little small, I understand the concerns there, right? But he measured exactly the same as Kyle Murray. He needs a team who's going to come in and build around him as well. But he has shown the ability to do many different things on the football field that I think prop up 
his value. I don't think he's just like, you don't think of Kyle necessarily as a pure rusher. I don't think of Bryce as a pure rusher, but he can give you some on the ground. So I don't think it's purely as much of a statue like a Jared Goff or a Matthew Stafford. And I don't think Stroud is necessarily the statue like those two guys. I think maybe his rushing value will be a little sneakier more in the burrow or the Herbert where he's capable. If you need the guy to move, um, but he's just a fluid thrower. He's his passer. He's maybe the best, uh, day one passer in this class. And, you know, if everything clicks there and he go, and especially if he goes to a team that's got weapons and it's ready to compete, um, I think he could be really, really successful. So taking the rich, the Richardson risk, I think is totally fine. You can justify it after those two guys. If you don't want to go in on JSN or Gibbs and you miss out on one of those two players, the miss there is not as significant as if you pass on CJ or young for me. So I just think Tui is a little rich. Yeah. And they brought up another question in the chat here, which is if he sits for a year, his value is the most insulated. No, um, unless I'm win now, he seems the most bust proof year one. And that's probably the case, but I'm not making a move in the second round of a startup draft when I have more insulated quarterback, uh, you know, safety there in a Dak Prescott, who's still been, you know, considered a first or second round value this late in his career, even after his, you know, most down year of his career. Um, and if Richardson misses, you know, you're, you're risking a, a Trey Lance situation where you're three years from now, you really can't move him because nobody wants to pay you what he's worth. He's really stuck on your rosters in a lot of situations. And while I do agree that, you know, CJ and Bryce have to be top 10 passers to, match Richardson's fantasy production if everything goes right there's a bigger chance that things go wrong with the quarterback position than any other position in the NFL even with first round picks um, so even if Richardson goes that high I mean we're talking there's 25 seasons ever um, where a, a quarterback has run for more than 650 yards like we're, we're talking about a very niche scenario and we have to assume that if he's doing that you know the team has to be in a good enough spot to let him start. Someone, uh, you know, poised the question on Twitter. If he gives you two top six fantasy seasons and he's out of the league by his fourth year, out of a starting job by his fourth year, are you going to be happy that you took that at the 208? Sure. If you sold at the right time and you were able to eat the, the, you know, bite the bullet year one and be successful years two and three in a league. But if he's out of a job by the fourth year, you know, it's going to look like a really tough situation to have, have insulated, you know, to sunk so much value into him. Yeah, and if you want to take that risk on Anthony Richardson, I think that risk comes in your rookie drafts, not in your yeah. startup draft. Going with him in the second round here, you are planting your flag. Your team is going to be in a struggle, very struggle situation if it does not work out right away. But if you are on your rookie draft and you have the 103 and you want to shoot on that upside because maybe your roster can afford a little bit more of a bust, I think that's completely fine. I don't have as much of an issue there Agreed. as I would with the startup. It's just very difficult for me to come in through the second round. We have this comment here from Jonathan, three years, 105 million for Gino in Seattle. This news dropped literally within the last five minutes since we started. So that could potentially change things here because that is significant money. You don't give a quarterback $105 million and uh, go and draft somebody. Maybe they do. I don't know the details of that contract at this point. If we have... Uh, outs on that contract, what the guaranteed money is. But that is certainly news, something that we will have to monitor and we will discuss in the upcoming weeks.